During the first week of our term, we need to ask the students about any specific dietary requirements that they may have so that when we go on our field trip during spring break, we know what to tell the cooks on the island where we're going. The perfect tool for doing this is to use a choice. So make sure that editing is turned on and then scroll down to the bottom of week one and click on the drop down for add an activity and select choice. For the choice name, let's simply go ahead and click inside of that field and enter in dietary requirements. Then. Click down in the introductory text section and give the students a little bit of instructions as to what it is that you want them to do. Please let us know about any dietary requirements you have. I am a, we'll just add a colon there at the end so that the students have a prompt and then they can select their answers. Go ahead and scroll down a little bit and let's look at some of the options that we have now. Limit allows us to limit the number of responses allowed. If we were to select yes for this, then if we only have 10 students and we limit the number of responses for a particular question, then all of the students would not be able to answer the same question. So we want all of the students to have an independent survey in this case. So we'll leave this set to disable. For options, these are the specific responses that we want our students to be able to select. So in regards to dietary requirements, we'll simply type in vegetarian, for option two, we'll type in carnivore. For option three, we'll type in omnivore. And for option four, we'll type in other, please contact me. If we needed to add additional fields, we could click the button to add three more fields at a time. Any fields that are left blank will simply be ignored by the Moodle choice. Go ahead and scroll down a little bit further. Now, if we wanted to restrict this choice activity to a particular time period, we could check the box here and set the open and until dates to restrict the time period for the choice. We're not going to do that, so we're going to uncheck this box. Go ahead and scroll down a little bit further. A couple of display parameters that we would like to use. The first is how we want to display our questions. Do we want them to be displayed horizontally or vertically? I like having mine displayed vertically, so we'll go ahead and select the drop down here and change it from display horizontally to display vertically. Next is publish results. And here we can choose whether or not as soon as the students finish the survey that they can see the responses from other students. We can say whether or not they can only see those responses after this activity time period has ended, or we can say always show the results to the students. Well, in this case, because we're asking them specific dietary requirements, the other students in the class do not need to see those responses. So we'll go ahead and leave it set to do not publish responses to students. That way, only the teachers of the course are able to see it. If we had chosen to reveal results to students, we would have some options here as to how to set the privacy settings for the students. In other words, we could publish the results, but they would all be published always anonymously to protect the privacy of each student. The next option is allow choice to be updated. This would be if you wanted the students to be able to go in, answer the choice activity, and then later go in and change their mind and select a different item. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and set no because the students should know the first time that they go into the survey whether or not they're a vegetarian, carnivore, or omnivore. We could also choose to show a column for any unanswered questions that were listed in the top, but we don't want that to show, so we're going to go ahead and leave that set to no. In the bottom common module settings, we can set the group mode if we're having this choice targeted a group specifically. We're not in this case, so we're going to leave this set to no groups. We are going to leave the visibility set to show so that the students all are able to see this activity and we're going to ignore the ID number. Go ahead and click save and return to course. And when the page refreshes, we're taken back to the top of week one. Go ahead and scroll down in our list of week one activities and we'll go ahead and use the move right tool to move the dietary requirements in under the assignments for the week. And let's go ahead and click on dietary requirements choice to see what it looks like. Here we can see the question that we asked the students and then the prompt of IMA, and they can simply select their response. In this case, I'm an omnivore, so I'll go ahead and select omnivore and click save my choice. Once the choice has been answered, for ourselves, we can see that the results are not currently viewable. But if we look in the upper right, we can see that we can view one response. We can click on that link, and you can see how the responses will begin to come into you. You can see each different column for each choice that was available to the students. You can see who answered and in which column, you can download the data into an ODS or open document format. You can download it as an Excel file, or you can download it as a text file. 
Let's go ahead and return back to our course by clicking on the BIOL 432 link in the breadcrumb section. And now you have a simple way of being able to create a single multiple source survey for your students by using the choice activity.